Hmm, what's this? Hello, welcome to The Freak Show. Bumpy McSquiggums here. I want to thank you all for joining me as I start up my first look mini-series on Cyrillim 2. It's by Thylacine Studios. It released on August 12th of 2016 out of Steam Early Access. And if you guys act quickly before August 19th, you can grab it for 10% off. What is Cyrillim 2? Well, if you guys recall way back when, I did do a singular first look video on Cyrillim. And it's essentially kind of a like a, a classic JRPG, but it has monster hunting stuff added in there. It, it's a pretty cool game, guys. I had a lot of fun with the other one, and I'm planning to have a lot of fun with this one. I haven't actually touched it yet, guys and gals. It just came to me today in the mail, and I decided to do a video on it. So, let us begin. Cyrillim, oh, I guess it's going to tell you a little bit right here. Cyrillim 2 contains a light storyline for you to follow. However, unlike in most other RPGs, it is not meant to be the focal point of the game. Boss fights encountered throughout the story are extremely difficult. If you find yourself unable to defeat these enemies, don't worry. Fine-tune your party, adopt a new strategy, and try again once you're stronger. Good luck, Commander. Alright, I am using a PS3 controller emulating an Xbox 360 controller, and it seems to be working fine. Oh my, could it really be you? Have I found, finally found the one I'm looking for? Quickly, human, tell me your name. My name? I don't have a name. Can I just type it? No, I can't. All right. Oh, my name. Well, what's in a name? I suppose my name's Bumpy. It truly is. All right, we're going to confirm Bumpy. Yes, yes, it is you. Bumpy, you have no idea how long I've been looking for you. The esteemed king of Cyrillum. Um, or are you the queen? Listen, I, I don't mean to sound rude, but I honestly can't tell. Are you male or are you a female? Well, I feel masculine now. Thank you. Of course I knew it. You're a king and a darn good one at that, or so I've heard. All right, one final question. What sort of mage are you? Life, death, or something in betwixt? What am I? Only time will tell. Alright, so we get to choose our class. We can either be a Chaos, Death, Life, Nature, or Sorcery Focused Mage. Now, when I last played Cyrillum 1, I decided to play the Nature. I don't know if I'm going to do that this time around. Let's read what the individual things have. Chaos Magi are calculated risk takers who capitalize on uncertainty and discord to overwhelm their foes. Chaos Magi start their quest with a Berserker Fiend, a terrifying beast of discord that uses its anger as a weapon. The Death Magi enjoy strength in numbers when constructing an army or outfitting their spell books. Death Magi start the quest with a rapturous ghoul, a mindless zombie that exists only to kill for its master. The Life Magi rely on amplifying their creature's endurance and use restoration spells to remain steadfast in battle. Laugh, laugh. Life Magi start their quest with a Dusk Crusader, a defensive fighter capable of withstanding even the most brutal of attacks. The Nature. I might go Nature again, guys. This is a different Nature guy than I had before, and he looks cool. I, I like me some ogres and cyclopses and such. Uh, nature Magi are well-rounded survivalists who always seem to have an answer to anything standing in their way. Nature Magi start their quest with the Sand Giant, a slow but powerful creature that can regenerate its own flesh when wounded. And finally, we have Sorcery. Sorcery Magi are resourceful spellcasters that can manipulate the environment to their benefit. Sorcery Magi start their quest with a Coast Watcher, a cunning minion that relies on its boundless wit to overcome foes. We're gonna go Nature again because why not? I've got it! You are King Bumpy the Nature Mage! Oh, but where are my manners? My name is Vertrog, God of Time, and the Eternity's End is where I call home. Now then, on to more important matters. You're probably wondering why I, an all-powerful god, seek counsel with a human like you. Truth be told, I have reasons to believe that, or I have reason to believe that your kingdom, Cyrillim, may be in immediate danger. You see, a demigod with not-so-good intentions has risen to power in the kingdom of Cato. He calls himself Misery. No, Misery, you failed me in Dota 2. You guys made it to the grand finals. Uh, anyway, he calls himself Misery and has ambitions to overthrow the ever-prominent Cyrillim. 
Now, normally I wouldn't bother, that wouldn't bother me all too much, such is the way of humans, after all, but misery doesn't plan to stop upon Cyrilim's demise. Oh, no, no, no. As you know, Cyrilim sits atop a gigantic nether orb. With it, a demigod like Misery could abuse this relic to attain full-on godhood. Even in his weakened state, Misery is a force to be reckoned with, and worse yet, as a god, I am unable to intervene in such affairs. That is where you come in, my dear Bumpy. Only a human of your strength can hope to defy Misery. And considering he's killed most other kings and queens, well, well we don't have many other options. Now, I'm sure you're asking yourself, how in the great pandemonium will I ever defeat a demigod? The answer is simple, my dear human friend, with plenty of training. Let's get started. All right. Ooh, shiny. Welcome to Eternity Zen, one of the many different realms you'll encounter during your travels. As I said before, Eternity's End is my domain, so this would be the perfect place for me to teach you everything you need to know about creatures, battling, and all kinds of other exciting things. So then, let's get started with the basics. In this world, you need to collect and summon creatures to fight for you. I've already prepared one such creature for you, the Sand Giant. Don't be shy, go up to it and introduce yourself. I don't know, I'm a little, I'm a little hesitant here. Alright, let's see what we got here. Although the sand giant does not speak, it seems to be oddly familiar with you. The creature nods at you assuredly. You receive a sand giant creature! Perfect, now let's see how the two of you fare in battle together. Use the teleporter to move to the next area and confront the enemy I've created there. Must I? Ooh, I can use the D-pad too. Oh, I'm in love. All right, sorry guys. I'm happy. Oh, he is a wretched, nasty little beast. I am a little bit off-put and scared, but it's okay. We're gonna go and fight him. The dungeon shade flashes an evil grin as you approach. Wipe the arrogance from its face. All right, a hostile dungeon shade has appeared. Uh huh. What do I do? It is your sand giant's turn. Select an action. We can attack, we can defend, we can provoke. We can cast, or we can extract. We're going to attack. Boom! Dodged. What? We're going to attack again. Boom! Again with a crit and another dodge. And finally, we put him in the ground with a second crit. On our third attack, you and your creature are victorious. Woohoo! Level 1, King Bumpy. Level 1, Sand Giant. 54 experience gain for him. Only 41 for me. Uh, that's okay. Alright, we are going to gain 96 brimstone, 102 crystal, essence, and granite. And 99 power. I also gained 5% power balance, bringing your total power balance to 105%. Well done, it looks like your foe left behind a little gift for you. Why don't you open it and see what's inside? Sure. You eagerly pry open the treasure chest. It contained a sword. Oh my, you found an artifact. Each creature can equip one artifact to boost their strength or even grant them new traits. This sword is a little boring, but later on you'll find much better artifacts for your creatures. Why don't you equip that sword to your sand giant? Go on, I'll wait. To equip an artifact, press Q to open the menu, then select creatures, then select equip artifact, then select the sword you just received. Uh, aha. Uh, creatures, the sand dude, equip artifact, sword. Alright, plus 10 to his attack. You equip your sand giant with the sword, level 1. Well done, you're pretty good at this. Use the teleporter again and let's finish things up. I can do that, sir. I can do that. Ooh, another shiny chest. You eagerly pry open the treasure chest. It contained a gem of shell burst. How rare, a spell gem. You can equip your creatures with these items to allow them to cast the spell contained within. 
Normally, each creature can equip only three spell gems at a time, but there are plenty of ways to increase this limit later on. Now then, please equip the spell gem to your sand giant. Alright, to equip a spell gem, press Q to open the menu, then select creatures, then select manage spell gems, and then select an empty spell gem slot. I can do that. Manage spell gem. Gem of Shell Burst. Reduces the target's defense by a moderate amount and deals damage equal to 200% of the amount reduced. Impressive. Perfect! Great work! For your final test, I've resurrected that poor dungeon shade that you beat up earlier. Finish him off for uh, good this time. Sure, I can do that. The dungeon, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, wait. The dungeon shade snarls with anger. It must be upset from the beatdown you gave it a few moments ago. Try to finish it off. Or time to finish it off. A hostile dungeon shade appeared. Alright, attack! We hit a lot harder. Still dodgy as ever. You and your creatures are victorious. Alright, sweet. Hey, our sand giants level 2 and so are we. Again, about the same. A little bit different, but still close. And 5% more power balance. Excellent, you seem to have a firm grasp over the basics at the very least. But you are still not ready to face misery. Far from it, in fact. Use a teleporter one last time. It will take you back to your kingdom, Cyrilim. Meet with your most trusted companions and tell them everything you've learned about misery. When the time is right, I will show you how to breach misery's castle and destroy him. But for now, you must seek out new creatures to bolster your army and hone your skills. Good luck, Bumpy. Thank you. You return to your home kingdom of Cyrilim. Upon arriving, you hurriedly discuss the looming situation with your most trusted wards, Damios and Hebron. You say you spoke to Vertrag again, King Bumpy? What did he say this time? So it seems that this misery character wishes to destroy our kingdom and use our power to ascend to godhood? This does not bode well for us, King Bumpy. We must prepare for battle immediately. Indeed. King Bumpy, you did not earn your royal title for any small reason. You are the most powerful mage in all the land. And better yet, you are touched by the gods. As far as we can recall, you are the only human capable of communicating with these deities. If anyone has a chance to stop this so-called demigod, it is you. And yet I fear that our noble king may have some work to do before he can hope to take on such an assumedly powerful adversary. There is little time to act, King Bumpy. Let us prepare immediately. First things first, you won't survive long with only a lonely creature by your side. Take this core to the summoning Braziar. Braziar, Braziar, I got nothing. In the southern end of Cyrilum, use it to summon a new creature. Then return to me. The vicious Walper, Walpertinger, yes, core, oh, I'm in love. Take this item to the spell chamber to summon a new vicious Walper Walpertinger. I can't even say it anymore, guys. Walper Walpertinger creature with the following ability. By the way, that was like my favorite pet that I had in World of Warcraft, just so you guys know. Uh, sorcery a Surge. After this creature attacks or is attacked, it casts a random sorcery spell. Cool. Walpertinger. Walpertinger. Whatever. It's fine. And never, ever, ever... I don't want to discard it. What do I want to do? Can I take it? Is, it? is it mine? Do I own this? I do. Okay. Alright, something about going south. Open your quest log to do more details and such and junk. Okay. In the southern section of Cyrilum to summon a new creature. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen. I want to summon a creature. The Wolpeltanga. You say it with a, like, a weird accent. It's easier to say. All right, yes, summon this creature. I have done it. I lost 1,000 brimstone crystal and one vicious Wobbletinger core in the process. Good work, you summoned a new creature. Once you acquired additional cores, you can return to this brazier to summon even more creatures. You might have noticed that summoning your vicious Wobbletinger has also cost you some of the brimstone and crystal. Both of these resources can be obtained by defeating enemies. Congratulations, you completed a castle quest. 
Achievement unlocked. Raising an army one. You earned one exalted emblem. Cool. I like this, guys and gals. Uh, I was kind of impressed with the first game in the series, a uh, regular Cyrillum, Cyrillum 1.0. Cyrillum 2, it's got a even nicer, it's like a sharper quality. You're not quite as zoomed in. Uh, wow, I can even move with the right analog stick. That's weird. I like it, guys and gals. I do. I, I'm a fan. I'm a big fan. All right, we need to talk to you, buddy. Most excellent. You can acquire additional cores. Oh, I've completely lost my voices. It's fine. By extracting them from enemy creatures. Be warned, however, aside from a few basic creatures, you can only extract from a creature that is already contained in the creature bestiary. Located in the library. Speaking of which, Katarina, the Kingdom Librarian, has requested you meet with her at your earliest convenience. You shouldn't keep her waiting. You know how... You know she can have a nasty temper at times. You'll find the library by walking through the eastern wing of Cyrilin. Don't go too far, though. You might end up in the tavern. <laughs> All right, well, we don't want to go, quite go to the tavern yet. All right. Castle quest received. Knowledge is power. Here we are. Must be you. Oh, King Bumpy, I'm glad you came. I've just received a large supply of useful books that might pique your interest. Some books provide useful information about different parts of our very own castle, while other books are enchanted. They'll write themselves if you learn more about the outside world. If you have time, feel free to take a look. I'm not doing that anymore. Thank you for visiting with me, uh, King Bumpy. You should return to Damaos, 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 and see if he has anything else to teach you. Oh, but before you go, take these spell gems. You'll find them useful on your journey, especially after you've acquired new creatures. Ooh, a gem of elemental barrier, chain lightning, wrath of nature, water enchantment, ice bolt. I'm a fan of all of these things. Thank you. I think my Wolpeltinga needs to have himself a spell or do. Oh, I do. Alright, we're gonna give you the spell of chain light. Actually, how much mana do you have? 22, okay. That will predicate what I give you. Elemental barrier. Ice bolt? Target takes a small amount of damage and is afflicted with frozen. It's odd that we have. Hmm. Well, we'll give you Ice Bolt, since you don't have a tremendous amount of mana. That costs none, so that's a net win for me. The Myos. Ah, good, you're back. It is time for you to learn about the Teleportation Shrine. This fabled relic allows you to teleport to a realm, a land far away from here. There you'll encounter all sorts of dangers and delights alike. When you use the Teleportation Shrine, you'll be able to select a realm depth. The higher the realm depth, the more dangerous and rewarding the realm. Keep in mind, however, that you can only teleport to a realm depth that you've already visited. Care to give it a try? Use the teleportation shrine to teleport to a realm. Defeat the enemies you find there to strengthen your creatures, and be sure to explore whatever your eye what whatever your eyes take you for treasure. Wherever, wherever your eyes take you for treasure. When you're finished, locate the teleportation shrine somewhere in the realm and use it to return to Cyrilin for further instruction. All right, so a lot of this is very, very similar, if not exactly identical or the same as the first game. So cool. Teleport, it costs us 15% balance of power. All right, let's do it. And unfortunately, we can only go to level one. It doesn't allow me to change. So let's go to level one. And I've already completed a quest, and it looks like there is a creature there ready to do battle with me. All right, we're up against the Coast Watcher. All right, I'm going to try casting my uh, bolt here. Get frozen. 22 damage. He was frozen. And he thawed. And he attacked. Do we hurt ourselves doing that? I feel like we hurt ourselves doing that. I'm going to provoke you. Now I'm going to attack. I guess we do a little bit of damage. For Holy. Well, he done got wrecked. All right. Gain a little bit of experience and a little bit of uh, resources, and we got 6% of balance of power. Is this a thing we can do? You come across a band of travelers. They greet you warmly and offer to trade with you. Unfortunately, you have nothing that they're interested in buying from you. Perhaps there are some resources nearby that they might be interested in. Like this. An ancient relic. It's most certainly worth its weight in resources. It's too heavy for you to carry, though. Huh. 
Is there a way to have like one of my my creatures do that? No. Well, it's a bit disappointing. Hey, we get to fight our own guy. Sweet. Attack. Ooh, we're blurry and fast. Attack. Who's he gonna hit? He's got rapid regen. All right. We too should have rapid regen. Ooh, we're suffocating him. I like this guy. He's my hero. We stunned and oh man, look at us. We're just amazing. The Wolpul Tenga is doing work. All right, more stuff. Our balance of power has gone up. Let's go and do battle with this guy again. Man, straight murder him with that guy. It's like guaranteed crit and just owned. Are the battles moving too slowly for you? Consider enabling turbo mode. Press Q to open the menu. Select options, gameplay, turbo mode for details. Um, we can give it a shot. I just want to see what it looks like. I'm personally fine with the way it is right now. Is it gameplay, turbo mode? Okay. Destroyed. Can we pick that up yet? Nope. really notice anything different. Ooh, 86 crystal, 61 crystal. Come on, man. Let's go. Okay, I definitely noticed something different that time. Alright, it is quite a bit quicker. No, I, I like it better the normal way. I know a lot of people get impatient. I imagine if you're playing this for like a ridiculously long amount of time, maybe it would be bad. But I'm okay with going normal mode. I'm also a little, not concerned, but I'd like to see what reordering does. Oh, I can reorder my creatures. Okay, that's fine. Still can't pick that up, huh? There's water here. Oh, is it possible there's water to be found in this desert? No, oh, wait. It was actually a treasure chest. That's not strange in any way, shape, or form. I eagerly pry open the chest. We got a handful of granite, a staff level 1, and a death shield level 1. Cool. Cool. All right, um, creatures. You, I want you to equip an artifact. How about the staff? All right, what's this? Death repellent, receive the following loot. Huh, weird. Come across the band of travelers and get you warmer. Nope. Apparently they don't love me as much. Despite its painfully hot days, the barrens are excessively cold at night. This wood might be useful to make it through the long evenings around here. Destroyed a skeleton. Destroyed a rock. Some more chaos repellent. Cool. This inscription contains ancient texts that not even Cyrilum's greatest scholars could hope to translate. It also depicts two creatures and the offspring they'll produce if they breed. You quickly write down the combination to use later on. Uh, any Forsaken plus a Revenant King will bring out a Forsaken Spine Whisperer. So, on top of all the other stuff, guys and gals, this is also a cross-breeding thing. So, technically we could breed two different creatures and get something else entirely. So, if you guys are into collecting creatures and, um, well, just doing various things. Collecting creatures and breeding creatures and making more powerful creatures... Finding the right combination for your party and what you're achieving or trying to achieve and your goals and whatnot. This is 100% a game for you. You guys should really, really get behind this game. It's actually quite a lot of fun. I have had a blast with the first one, and I gotta say, I like the second one even more. Oh, there's actually a group of bandits. The bandits attack! That's not really a group, it's a singular bandit, but okay. Spell Blast! Eh. Underwhelming, but doesn't matter. We are too strong for our own good. I don't know what predators in the sand. I don't know what we gain out of uh, leveling up, though. It's destroying everything out here, huh? So that's one thing I'm not 100% aware of. Like, what do we get out of leveling up? Hey, we found the teleporter thing, so we can now leave whenever we're feeling froggy enough to do so. Whenever we want to leave, we can now do so, which is pretty neat, pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there's no 
nothing really in here. Destroy some skeletons along the way. Some plants. There's another chest over there. Another relic that's too heavy for us. And a creature. Another group of bandits. No, whatever will we do? Apparently one shot them. It's cool. I am totally fine with that. Attack! My god, the Warple Tenga is really, really strong. I just one shots just about anyone. Alright, a gem of panic attack and a handful of crystal. Cool. What is that? A level 4 minor sigil of the Warple Tenga. Use this item to start a battle against a pack of level 8, 25 gene strength enemies that have the following properties. Yeah, I don't think I want to do that. At least not yet. Maybe eventually. We're pretty low on level. I assume we get more stats as we level up. Are they going to do anything? One traveler asks if anything that could be used to start a fire. You offer the wood you found earlier, and the traveler greatly ex or gratefully accepts your offer. The gem of Petrify. Turn. Target is afflicted with stun for one turn. Cool. I don't necessarily need to do anything else right now that, so we're going to go over here. Bartering in the Barrens. That's okay. And we're back here. Is there anything there? Start a fire? Yep. Alright, we'll take both of those things. They left the area as well. Oh, they're just like faded more. I wonder what we need to do to become strong enough to lift those things out of the ground. Some more granite, destroy some more cacti. Some more painfully dry, no, uh, ridiculously hot stuff. The wood, and then starting the fire. You know the you know the routine. Is it possible? Oh no, it was another group of bandits. Ooh, look at this dude. He's crazy as a skeleton sniper. Alright. Well, he didn't survive very far. A little underwhelmed by him, but that's okay. Still too heavy for us to carry. Alright, well we're going to continue to explore this place. Once it's fully explored, then we'll go back and we'll think about teleporting back to town or what have you. And see where that takes us. But for now, and we're going to stick with this episode until I'm done doing what I'm doing right now, folks. Which is actually pretty close. And we're nearly done with, uh... Well, we're nearly out of time for the episode anyway, so it all works out pretty decently, I'd say. I think we've pretty much covered... Oh, no, there's a little bit of spots left over here to uncover. Destroy that. Yep, more of this. Yep, start a fire, handful of granite. We will take it. You guys can fade into oblivion. Wow, this is uh, quite a bit larger than I was anticipating. wonder if there's going to be any uh, creatures over here. It's looking like no, but eh, we'll see. No, but there's actually a treasure chest. What do we get? White amber and a handful of essence. I'll take it. And I shall destroy many other things in the process. Alright. Handful of brimstone. Thank you. Take care, and I will see you later, sir. Shall destroy that. Destroy this. Still imagine that's too heavy for us. Yep. Alright, if we get uh, a Wyvern Air Slayer plus any Griffin, we can get a Wyvern Daybreaker. Cool stuff. Sounds sounds legit. Alright, another chest over here. Steel Fluff. Damage control. While this creature is above 90% health, your creature takes 65% less damage. Huh. Interesting. Now this game's actually pretty deep and complex from what you can already see. There's a lot here and I figured one episode, just like with Serial and the first one, I, I felt a little bit bad only doing one episode, but the game is uh, quite a bit more deep and it's hard to really showcase everything the game has to offer in just one quick episode. So that's why I decided to do a mini-series, guys and gals. So I'll play through, I don't know, three, five, ten episodes, who knows. We'll play through quite a bit, and we'll see what the game has to offer from there, and yeah. I believe I have done it. I have 
Hmm. I have a map over here. I, I can't really look at it any more than... Like, there's no... There's no really zooming in or out on the map. Uh, I'm wondering if we can see the map. Nope, doesn't look like it. Okay. So what we're going to do right now, folks, is head back to... Well, we'll use the crystal, and we're going to actually teleport back to Cyrilim, and we'll end up having to go through again, ladies and gentlemen. But we'll go here, and we will talk to our buddy, King Bumpy. King Bumpy, you're just in time. We received word from our scouts that a monstrous creature is planning to attack Cyrilim at any given moment. We're unsure if this attack has anything to do with misery, but nonetheless, you must slay this threat before it reaches our kingdom. Our scouts last saw the creature several realms deeper than where you just came from. Be careful out there, King Bumpy. You've received a quest to defeat a story boss. Story bosses are unique in that they usually require you to do something special in order to defeat them. For more information, use the inspect command and target the boss while you're in battle. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it for this very first episode of my first look miniseries on Serial Limb 2. Once again, guys and gals, you can get it for 10% off if you grab it before August 19th. If you want more information about the game, where to get the game, information on the developer, it'll all be down below in the description of the video. And if you guys enjoyed this video, please like, comment, subscribe, and share it, and I will see you guys in the very next episode. Until then, my name is Bumpy McSquiggums. Thank you for stopping by The Freak Show, and I will see you later.